It's all about the compressors today. Spiky bits. Welcome back, Hobby Maniacs. Today, we are going to be talking about compressors, specifically the 2D. I did not make that name up. That is his actual name. No, <laughs> no name compressor brand from Spray Garner. We talked a lot about Spray Garner in the past. It's where I pick up all my airbrushes, the airbrush supplies from here in the States. Of course, you know, overseas, you can always source the stuff a lot closer to home. But here in the States, a lot of us, uh, well, we're always looking for that better solution. So here it is right here. And as you can tell, it's pretty light. I'm just throwing it around like it ain't no thing. Uh, it does have a lot of cool design features here that I wanted to turn you all on to. Now, we're going to break it down as we check the product listing over on their page here in a second. But as you can probably tell, it looks a lot different than most compressors you've seen uh, people using or perhaps you own. And that's because it's it's a better quality compressor. Truth be told, I don't know which one, the thing with these no-name compressors is they're the white label or the generic versions of a lot of popular compressors out there. I don't know which one this configuration is supposed to be. I can just kind of look at it and tell you, hey, these components look good and here's why. And here's the stats on it and let's listen to it and let's try it out. I've been using it for a couple of weeks now. It seems to pass the muster for sure. Uh, no crazy burnouts, no overheating and I airbrush when I airbrush, I airbrush for a while. So the fact that it can keep up with my needs is pretty good and it may have something to do with uh, the heat sink up here, the powder coated heat sink. So let's talk about a couple things that I noticed as an engineer real quick about this one here. You can see that the air tank, and by the way, this air tank's pretty big. This is a three liter tank, which is, if you've watched a lot of my videos in the past, I'm using a Sparmax that costs three times as much as this and it has a quarter or a half a tank of less of air um, you know, capacity in it than this one right here. I noticed it didn't kick on as much. So I was like, dang, this thing's bigger. Ugh. Anyways, so this tank right here is a powder. It's got some sort of powder coat on it. it looks very strong, very durable. It's not going to be something that you see sometimes people's coatings or the outside of their tanks kind of um, cook off, so to speak. And that's literally what it does. It cooks off the coating on it because it, once all of this gets hot, the heat transfers down to here and that's bad. That's bad news. By that point, you probably already, uh, there's some bad things happening to your airbrush or to your compressor. Now up here on the heat sink area, you never want to touch this when you're, when your uh, compressor is going, this is going to be hot. This is where it actually uh, gets rid of all the heat from inside. Fortunately, it's got this little handle. Make sure you keep it down so you don't accidentally melt the, the rubber on the end of it. But this here, as you might notice, and it's kind of hard to see with the lighting a little bit and the fact that it's so dark, is this is also powder coated as well. This is a nice solid powder coat. This is something that isn't going to melt or cook off uh, very easily either. Now, the rest of the components here seem to be of a higher quality kind of plastic. Of course, there's an on off switch which is also really good. A lot of airbrushes, they don't, or a lot of compressors don't have that on off switch. You're like, wait, I'm supposed to like reach down and like hit my power strip or like pull it out of the wall. Like it's so annoying. Like it, with most low cost compressors, these are features that you don't get that I, that I, I thought was pretty neat. So you got an on off switch, you've got a handle, which a lot of them don't have a handle either, even though it is pretty light and there's actually suction cups on the end right there for a little bit more redundancy if you want to have it on your table and you don't want it falling off on your pets or your cats or whatever, or if you just want to have it on the floor and have it nice and secure and kind of locked down. So I'm going to put this down real quick. I'm going to plug it in to my antiquated power grid right here. <laughs> and we're going to take a look at the features and show you how good it is as we finish painting up one of our models. Okay, so spraygunner.com, like I said, your source for all airbrush supplies, compressors, accessories, whatever you need. Airbrush and airbrush accessories. Here's the 2D. Like I said, I didn't make that up. There is the Rudy 2D as well, which I don't think we'll, I don't think we're going to get that one to try out. I don't know. Maybe we will. But either way, I like this. Uh, this one's got a lot of heart, a lot of character here. Like I said, a lot, a lot of features. And for the price point, I feel, I feel like it's a good value. This seems, I mean, besides some proprietary, like the silver bullet water trap and stuff, that my Sparmax has. This seems to be just as good as my $350 compressor at the time. Now I think the price has come down, it's about 300, but either way, uh, it seems to be pretty solid so far, but I'll let you guys listen to it uh, when we get going here in a second. So here's the specs on it. Of course, it's oil-free design. 
don't worry about the auto shut off and stuff we can set that up to pretty much anything i have it down to about 30 psi right now it's a three liter tank which is man it's just big it's big you'd be surprised how often it kicks on and doesn't kick on by the way i've accidentally left this compressor on uh throughout the week and it didn't kick on the whole time until i realized to go streaming on the next monday that i had left the compressor on it held the full air capacity of the tank it did not leak at any point um, through the hose, through the airbrush, through any of the interior components or nothing like that. So as far as I'm concerned, again, very good quality. 110 volt, of course, here in America. Now, here's the big thing. Noise level, 47 decibels for one minute. It is going to, uh, well, I don't think it runs for a full minute. It is going to run. It is going to seem noisy, but it's really, in my opinion, not noisy. And I pulled up the decibel scale here because I kind of wanted to know. So at 50 decibels is basically a quiet suburb conversation at home, I guess technically the TV, although the TV seems to always be higher than what you're talking, your talking voice is. At 44 decibels, verticals, or the library at 40 decibels. So it's gonna clock in right in between here. I've turned off all my filters, all my noise compressions, so that you guys can actually listen to it as it works. So we're gonna plug it in, we're gonna get it ready to go, get it full, and just do some really quick airbrushing and see how long it lasts and then give you guys an idea of how it sounds and the overall feel to it. Okay, so a couple of things real quick. First up, we have uh, the Ultra airbrush here. This is a harder steam back airbrush. It goes for 90 bucks over on Spray Gunner. This is part of the combo we've been developing for you all. I think it will be with the 2D compressor because I really like that one and I feel like this and that. Less than 200 bucks with a little uh, manual air control valve will be a great combo that's a, that's a starter combo but just is good to keep airbrushing with throughout the career of your airbrushing hobby I feel like. So I switched out the end here with my uh, other end which you can see here from my Infinity. So don't get it twisted you will have to buy that little pinch end here a little uh, separate but it's not that much higher of a cost I just it's a little bit easier to use in my opinion learning on it you may prefer the other one so that out of the way here's what we're about to do i have my sparmax compressor it's about to uh, click on to pick up air so i'm just going to run this air here for a second and let you listen to that one refilling and then we'll put on the 2d and do a little painting with that and see how long it takes uh, to kind of uh, empty out and fill up it shouldn't be too awful long but i want you guys to get a comparison of a 300 ish dollar compressor versus a 100 dollar compressor this seems to be just as good in my mind at least yeah maybe i'm trying to convince myself so here we go i'm just going to pass some air through this airbrush actually i should i guess i should get a full blast there and i thought so there it is that's the sparmax kicking on All right, and now we'll plug in the 2D and have a little fun with it. So now I'm just gonna block in a little bit of color here on some areas that need kind of some touch-ups and we'll see how long the air lasts for. All right, so let's get into position here. And this is gonna be, the air is gonna be coming through the 2D and we'll just kind of do some painting real quick. So just laying down some nice easy base coats I always forget using this airbrush. It's a little bit different from my Infinity. So I'm a little bit more used to. There we go. And the key when you're airbrushing, of course, is to get the different angles. So you always want to make sure that you come back. And sometimes, you know, after you do a project and you come back after a couple months, you realize, oh crap, I forgot a bunch of them undercuts right there. I better. Better go back and do that, but I never have the time. So I thought today would be pretty good. So you can see right there too, there's a little bit of spots I missed. So this is great for just laying down some base coats here with this airbrush and then hitting it with a little air just to burn it out and dry it up. At some point, this may kick on. Like I said, it is about a half a gallon more than the one you just heard. Let me 
but I'm curious as to why it hasn't turned on quite yet. There it is. So, <laughs> it is a little bit noisier than the other one, and it goes for a little bit longer, but I feel like that has to do with the fact that it has a slightly bigger tank, of course, uh, because it definitely seemed to last a little bit longer as I was laying down those base coats right there, in my opinion. So, uh, overall, I don't feel like, I don't feel like there's anything out of the ordinary besides it sounds a little bit different and maybe stays on for a little bit longer. So for the most part, I feel like the 2D is a great buy for a hundred bucks, along with the HS Ultra Airbrush. If you're just looking to get a starter setup, this is way more than a starter setup and should last you for the, uh, the lifetime of your airbrushing career. In my humble opinion, of course, a lot of this stuff's warrantied as well. Spray Garden has always worked with me. I've never had any issues. Uh, they're, they're super easy to work with. I love, I love buying stuff from them and I definitely love helping to promote them as well. So make sure you check out SprayGarden.com. You scoop up these no-name compressors as well as the harder Steinbeck uh, um, airbrushes from them. And we'll have the links to everything right below. And by now, <laughs> in the future, when you're seeing this video, we will have that starter combo hopefully finalized and put together for you guys, including an uh, air control valve along with the compressor and the airbrush itself in the link below and also in the video description too. So make sure you check that one out.